Hi, my name is Hen Zhang. I'm a PhD student from Purdue University. Now I'm presenting the mobile cross-sensing data integrity case study paper. This paper was accepted to cross-sensing 2017. It's the first ACM cross-sensing workshop and it is, it is collocated with census in Delft, Netherlands. In this paper, we analyze the data integrity characteristics in a typical mobile crossing campaign and show its meaningful insights. So let's get started. This is the outline for today's presentation. I will give uh, a brief introduction of mobile cross-sensing and the background of the repetition system we use in our user study and the sensitive framework that we propose and run a user study to evaluate it. And then we give, I gave the detail of the user study and the evaluation and the conclusion to end up with this presentation. So what is a mobile cross-sensing? It's, it's an activity to synthesize knowledge from mobile, mobile device information, like your sense of values. And uh, in mobile cross-sensing, uh, there are two types. The first one is the participatory mobile cross-sensing. Like the example here, Waze is a driving help uh, map, like the Google map. So for example, the red car is driving from Purdue to Chicago. On the road, he finds a police guy and he reports that. He reports it through uh, Waze. Other drivers who is using Waze and on the same route will see this data information from this red car. Then the, red, the blue car who is driving very fast and he saw this information when he approaching the position where the police is, he slows down and he avoids a ticket. That's a typical example of participatory uh, mobile crisis. For opportunistic mobile cross-sensing, like a sunshine app here, it does not require user interaction. It will do some periodic sensing to get the information from sensor. It basically, everything is automatic and no user interaction is needed. That's two types. Then why we need mobile cross-sensing? Uh, there are basically four reasons. The first one is that smartphones are everywhere and it is equipped with a very good and highly sophisticated sensor to give enough information. The sensors, the sensors include barometer, gyroscope, accelerometer, thermometer, you name it, all kinds of things. And they can be used to, uh, for different applications, like the weather prediction, noise pollution map, road traffic condition reporting, and information reported from the client. I mean, the device is in real time, and they are less costly. Say if we want to know the weather map for the United States, Instead of installing weather station across this country, you can just take advantage of the user across the country and uh, get ask them to report the weather information locally, and then you can synthesize the weather map for the United States, easy and cheap. And the fourth reason is the network support. Since the mobile network is increasingly faster, so we can get information faster. And what is census? So since since it is uh, mobile cross-sensing infrastructure embedding at the edge of 4G network. It can provide us energy efficient mobile cross-sensing service. It's the, first, it's the first framework considering both client and server, and the main goal for this framework is to save per device energy as well as total energy for all the devices combined. So this, and this is the architecture for uh, sense it's in the between uh, Inobi and uh, the core network. So there are two paths from Inobi to core network. One is through legacy way, another one is through sensing server. When Inobi sees some mobile crossing traffic, it goes through uh, sensing server, which is path two, and sensing server will offload the mobile crossing traffic and uh, forward the rest back to the core network. And uh, there are three components. One is cross-sensing application server, which is a server of Sunshine or Ways. Another is cross-sensing client application. It's a Sunshine Ways client application. And uh, the sensing server, which sits in between. So cross-sensing application server will give tasks to sensing server. And sensing server will assign these tasks to the cross-sensing client's application. And uh, after get the client application finishes the task, get the data back to the to the sensing server, and sensing server will forward this data back to the cross-sensing application server. And what is the repetition system? It's used to rank users in a mobile crossing campaign. We can help mobile crossing crossing server choose reliable clients to do the mobile crossing tasks. 
so that the so that the information fetched from the data from the data reported by users will be reliable. And why we need it is because sometimes mobile crossing clients they may report some ero erroneous or malicious data. For example, uh, people may intentionally report a wrong traffic condition to avoid people pass pass near their homes or some environmental reasons such as uncertain GPS location at a local, I mean indoor environment, or other failures on the mobile device, network failures, or sensor noise, name it, all kind of things. And our reputation system consists of two modules. First one is watchdog module, the second one is sensor size module. And the watchdog module will take an input of vector, which is the sensor values from different users, and it generates a confidence score, and uh, the sensor map module will then generate the device score. Confidence score is means how confident the mobile cloud sensing server is to choose data from that user. And the reputation score or the device score is the final score that the mobile cloud sensing server will rely on to choose users. The reason we did not we did not just use uh, confidence score is because device score will provide two properties. I mean, the sensor size module will provide two property. First one, first property is smooth boundless growth with correct behavior, and the second property is a severe penalty upon inaccurate data upload. I will explain them later. For the watchdog module, uh, it take a it takes a vector of sensor values from different users and it calculates the average of the sensor values. And then, for each device, it will try to calculate the confidence score, and try to, and and after several iterations, try to find the convergence. And the the convergence basically relies on progressive identification and the elimination of outlier data points. For the synthesized module, uh, it is a function to generate the repetition score. Based on each participant's confidence score. Generally speaking, uh, the first option I mentioned before is a smooth bonus. So if a user reported a reliable and trustworthy data, then that user's reputation score will increase gradually. However, if a user reports a faulty data or wrong data, its reputation score should drop significantly. That's by nature. That's how the credit card works, right? And for the we use for the smooth balance property. We use compress function to provide, and for the severe penalty, we just to quadratically downgrade the user rep, uh, reputation when we see a faulty data. For the compress function, it's like this. It has three control parameters. A stands for the upper asymptote, is the upper bound, and B is the x-axis displacement. C is the growth rate. So that's a general graph of Gompers function. In our original study, uh, we take the barometer readings from smartphones for one week and with eight hours per, per day from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And uh, it consists of 60 students from Purdue University. The real study run at four test locations and four experiments, where ex each experiment will assign different tasks to users. So the table one, table two are some specification for the task and for the experiment. And the first plot is a general map for the four locations. And uh, the reputation system setup. So we chose the parameters for Gomez function as shown here. The reason we chose this parameter is because we want to make sure the zero reputation score is shifted approximately to the origin. And its maximum is one. That means the maximum repeating score is one. And we want the growth of the function is smooth. If we look at here, the right plot is just the one we chosen. And uh, so we normalize the output of the watchdog module to negative two to two, so that it can match the input for the Gomez function here. And uh, normalization is by this formula. It's nothing special, it's just a very basic of calculus stuff. And to evaluate, we aggregated the data from the four experiment. We found the 19 tasks generated from to the 16 mobile crossing clients. 
The first analyze is outlier analysis. We use we use Taki range test to define outlier, and we found that for across the 90 tasks, there are 7.2 percent of outliers in each task. That's pretty really high. If we look at the plot carefully, some in some tasks the outlier percentage rate goes up to 30 percent. That's too high. It's significant. So people when people are designing a mobile crossing campaign, they get definitely consider outliers. And for participation, um, we gave $25 Amazon gift card as an incentive to users, but we found that users' participation is decreasing across the days. And the lack of participation across users did not line up on the same day so that we can have enough number on each day. So some users miss Monday, some users miss Tuesday, but not everybody, not all users miss the same day. That's good for us. So the takeaway message for this analysis is that even for a very short uh, mobile crossing campaign, like us, seven days, users are getting unexpected, unexpected as time pass by. So when people are designing mobile crossing, mobile crossing cam campaign, they're going to provide a very good uh, incentive system to attract people. And let's see how the benefit of the repetition system works. So uh, we extract the data from 20, 12 tasks in one day's participation. And uh, each task required 10 minutes sampling period. Basically, every 10 minutes gave me the data for the barometer. So we see the plot here. There's 12 plots. The black horizontal line is every age repetition score. as the one divided by n calculated. It's pretty easy. So the black line, the people below the black line contribute to many zeros. Who, those who start, stay at the top contribute always good data. In the middle, occasionally send zero data. So Looking at this plot, we can have a very good reference on whom to choose and whom to avoid. We definitely want to choose people who are above the black line, right? So those people who are above the black line is called the preferred group. That's what we define here. And we are looking at the per, per user data and the, all the data from all users combined. So the left plot are the reliable use, user chosen by the representative system, which is five, and we compare their data with the actual parameter value in that days at Purdue. And we found that the difference is quite minimal. It's not a big deal. And for all the users, if we using the representative system, the data is like the black line. The red line is the actual true parameter value at Purdue. The black line are generated by, uh, by the reliable data selected by the representative system. But if we combine all users without the representative system, we see the blue line, I mean the green line. So users are not reliable. The data is far away from the true value. So in conclusion, uh, in a mobile crossing campaign on the reliable data is true, we cannot avoid it. And the data integrity is very hard to maintain due to you know some non-trivial spurious or missing data in your study, the complexity of the mobile crossing cross and campaign, some environmental reasons. So that's why we need a rapid system. It's a good reference to identify those spurious data and filter them out. One take up point is that when we run a user study, the repetition system runs for 20 seconds. We only have 60 users. But if we're gonna wanna, we, we want a very high integrity of data, and for a large scale user study or mobile, mobile crowdsourcing campaign, we need to dedicate enough computing resource to get a good result for the reputation system. All right, that's the end of my presentation. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.